Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this Trumpeter Landing Craft Mechanized Mark III. This is a 172nd scale model, and if you would like to see the build video, there's a link in the description and in the upper right corner of the video now. I built this model for the D Day group build that took place on my Discord server. The kit can be built as a US or British vehicle, and I chose to make mine British because why not? Unfortunately, I couldn't really find a lot of easily accessible and consistent information on the colours for these things, and I quickly got sick of searching with little result, so I'm going to be more or less winging it as far as colours and markings go. So this isn't going to be based on any specific landing craft, it'll be more of a generic one. If you don't like that, well, that sounds like a you problem. Let's get to the painting. I primed the model with black Steinal Res Primer, though of course feel free to use whichever primer you like best. Then I airbrushed on a base coat of Vallejo Model Air Dark Sea Grey. Pretty simple, just paint the entire thing one colour. It's pretty hard to mess that up. That said, it's a good idea to apply this in a couple of thin coats rather than one thick one. I then apply a highlight of Model Air Sea Grey. I apply this fairly heavily from above. Though I'm not really going for a solid coating, I do want some of the darker colour to show through. I spray some highlights on the side as well, particularly down the weld seams. I figured that would add some interest. You do see some of these painted with a red or black lower hull, but I'm not going to be doing this. I read somewhere that these would be painted to match the section of the ship on which they were held, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have a bright red streak on the side of your grey ship, does it? The next thing I did was to apply a dry brushing with the sea grey. I put this along the hard edges of the upper surfaces of the boat, and I also use it to add some streaking down the sides of the hull. I try to bring out the weld seams as much as I can with this. This did end up looking a little bit messy, but that's okay, it's not the final coat or anything like that. I then add a wash of army painter dark tone. This is thinned roughly 50-50 with water. I don't want to darken things down too much, just a little bit. I slop this all over the model, mostly trying to get it into all of the gaps and such. I try to avoid having it pull up and leave ugly tide marks when it dries. I'm pretty happy with the result I got with this, but I figured it might look better with a bit more highlighting. I dry brushed on some Vallejo model colour pale grey blue. I figured this would work better than the model air colours because it's thicker and thus more suited to dry brushing. I do this fairly lightly along the edges and the areas I previously dry brushed, just to bring them out again after the dark wash. I then use the same colour on a fine brush and do a little bit of edge highlighting around the bottom of the windows. This is because it was hard to get in there with the dry brush. I also use this to pick out some of the other details like edges of hatches, the flotation device hook things, and the lifting points on the sides of the boat. I apply this to the gauges on the control panel too. This is a bit messy, but it does bring them out just a tiny bit. Then I take some Vallejo model colour gunmetal and paint the ramp cable because why not make it a different colour? This is obviously a little bit fiddly, and I don't want the metallic anywhere but the cable. Going slowly and carefully is a good way to avoid making mistakes, obviously. This doesn't stand out against the hull's colour too much, not yet anyway, but we'll deal with that later. I take the same colour and apply it to the steering wheel, throttle handles, or what I think might be throttle handles, and the flat panel below the gauges. More metallics. This time Game Air Bright Bronze, which you can see I'm applying to the propellers. I'm doing this gently hoping they won't break off. I had issues getting these parts to stay on the model. Fortunately they did stay on, and now they're shiny. I then gave the model a coat of gloss varnish. This was for the decals, but I figured I might as well spray the whole model because I'll move on to the enamels after the decals. As for the decals, I'm pretty sure there were no British markings on the provided decal sheet, and I had no interest in searching for and waiting for British decals to arrive, if they're even available in the first place. I still wanted some sort of marking though, so I opted for a simple and very sensible number. These are of course the decals that came with the model and they're pretty decent. They went on very easily. I sealed the decals in with more gloss varnish and then it's time for enamel weathering. 
I start by applying some AK Interactive Track Wash that I thinned roughly 3 parts track wash to 1 part thinner. So it is thinned but not super thin. I apply this to the ramp cable. I am trying to be careful with it but as you can see I'm getting a lot of this on the surrounding areas. That's okay it can be cleaned up later. This really brings out the cable and in my opinion makes it look quite good. I wanted this to be rusty but not the really bright kind of rust, if that makes sense. As you can see I cleaned up the areas I spilled this colour on with a clean brush with clean thinner. I didn't remove it completely though, I blended it into the areas around the cable to create a dirty look. I kept using this colour applying a little bit of it to the flotation device hooks, the floor of the cargo area, whatever you call that, the well, I don't know. And I'm pretty messy with it. I also put some of this on the lifting ring things, and the weld seams. It would look pretty bad if I just left it this way, so again I take a cleanish brush with clean thinner on it and spread it around. On the outside I remove most of it using downward streaks. That makes sense, that sort of stuff would streak downwards. I don't remove too much of it from the floor area. I figured that would get pretty dirty and kind of rusty from being loaded with tanks and stuff. At this point I realised that I'd forgotten the flotation devices, so I painted them. I base coated them with Vallejo model colour ivory. Then because I'm incompetent I lost most of the video where I painted these. Anyway, this is what they looked like after I'd glued them into the hull. The red is Vallejo model colour red. Nothing really exciting about painting them, it was pretty straightforward, and I'm sure you could figure it out yourself. Once I'd glued these into place, I applied another coat of gloss varnish to both protect the acrylic paint on the rings and to seal in the previous layers of enamel. Then I take some AK Interactive landing gear wash. I was unable to find the landing gear, so instead I applied this to the propellers to make them look dirtier and less shiny. I also added this to a bunch of other areas, like the rudders, and the bits that hang down forward of the propellers, whatever that's called. I then take a clean brush with thinner on it and spread the landing gear wash out, thinning it and trying to get it to mostly sit in the gaps and such. This won't be so visible when the boat is complete so I'm not super worried about it being too neat. I also apply it on the bells of the tubers, I mean air intakes and on the flotation devices. Again I use a brush with thinner on it to clean it up and thin it out. I removed a lot of this. You can of course remove and reapply this as much as you want until you're satisfied with it. This is one of the benefits of working with enamels. Here is something that I figured might be a good idea. I put landing gear wash on the brush, then dipped it in thinner, then I tapped the brush to cause drops of colour to fall off and into the boat's hold. This of course requires the brush to be loaded but it's pretty simple to do. You can also hit the brush against the side of the model which seems to make smaller droplets. I think the effect is pretty decent. I continued adding the same enamel colour to various areas of the landing craft, in the corners and recesses around the hull and such. As before I apply and remove it as much as I feel is necessary. I'm trying to make the boat look used and a little bit dirty but not absolutely filthy. I streak any stains on the sides of the vertical surfaces downwards because that makes sense. I then move on and use AK Interactive Engine Grime to make some spillages on the rear deck and in front of the forward hatch because why not. I also use the same splattering technique as before with this colour just to add some variation to those stains. Then clean brush and clean thinner again to thin out those stains. Except in the cargo well, they can just stay how they are. Then I applied some AK Interactive Light Rust Wash. I figured this should be applied sparingly. This isn't an old rust bucket after all. As you can see I applied it streaking down from the lifting things, along the weld seams and where the cable connects to the ramp. Would you be surprised to learn that I then took a brush with thinner on it to thin this out and streak it downwards? Well, that's what I did. I removed most of the rust. Again, it's an active boat and I suspect sailors would be made to clean and repaint anything before it became too rusty. It keeps them out of trouble you see. 
And that's about as far as I really want to go with the weathering. It looks cleanish without being unrealistically clean in my eyes. It's been used but not had the crap beaten out of it. Not yet anyway. I finished the model with a coat of matte varnish. I'd ran out of my preferred AK Interactive Ultra Matte, so I used Minotaur Flat Coat, which did work, but not as well as Ultra Matte does. But I suppose that's okay. I wouldn't expect a boat like this to be totally dry anyway, so a little bit of sheen here and there is fine. As an extra touch, I sprayed the waterline area with gloss varnish, the idea obviously being to represent that area as being wet. I'm not sure how well it picks up on camera, it's pretty subtle in person, but I thought it would be a nice touch. Not quite as nice as mounting it in some resin water or something, but I'm not sure I want to do that at all. I still might though, we'll see. I have obviously completed this way after D-Day. I did try to get it done in time for the end of our D-Day group build, but as always, things come up and delays happen. At any rate, I'm pretty happy with the result I've achieved. It might not be a perfect replication of an LCM3, but I think it's pretty good. As I said earlier, it isn't meant to be a model of a specific boat. It just seemed like far too much work to even begin tracking down the relevant information. So it's a generic boat with a good, sensible and not at all rude number. I am thinking about adding a load to this landing craft. These carried vehicles and troops to the beach on D-Day, but I probably won't fill it with infantry. So it's likely going to be a truck or a tank or something like that. Maybe I'll get that done for next D-Day. It's not a priority now, but I'm certainly keeping my eye out for something cool in 172nd scale. As always, for those interested, I'll include a list of the paint colours I've used in the description below. Feel free to copy what I've done here, or use the list as a suggestion and choose whichever colours you would prefer. If you've painted one of these yourself, we would love to see it in the modelling section of my Discord server. There's a link in the description. What do you think of this boat? Should it have been pink? Let me know in the comments below. Unless you're going to whine about it being unrealistic or something, maybe just keep that to yourself. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe, follow, ring the bell and all the other things you do on YouTube and social media. Links to all of the things including Patreon and my Twitch channel are in the description below. You can also find the join button down there somewhere too. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.